For the next set of projects, I brought out my spare chunk of hardboard here. And I'm just gonna cut out a bunch of bases. So you can see I've drawn out some longer sections, some roughly circular ones, some bean shapes. And I'm gonna cut it out with the jigsaw, and then I'm gonna bevel the edges with my Dremel with the sandpaper bit. I'm not gonna show me actually doing that because it makes a lot of noise and you guys get it. For my next terrain project, what we're going to make are some piles of scrap. In Genesis of the Dalek, when the Doctor and his companions are moving across the wasteland, he comes across these unrecognizable piles of burnt up metal. And so I'm gonna add some of those. I have no idea what they are in the show, whether they carted them in to represent battle field debris, or they're just things that were out rusting in the quarry, but we're gonna try and make them. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these bases that we cut and beveled down, and we're just gonna build those up with some rocky terrain, like we did for some of the other quarry stuff. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a chunk of scrap XPS foam, and I'm just gonna cut out a couple chunks and make some, some rocky type uh, pieces just to increase some height, give the terrain pieces some cover. So I'm just gonna quickly make a couple of those. And I'm not gonna go through any elaborate method here. Should really be careful. I'm just using a regular steak knife, so it's not terribly sharp, but still gotta be cautious. And just make a bunch of those until I'm satisfied. Maybe take an actual rock and press down on some of these to give it a more rocky texture. Yeah, I'll, I'll spruce those up a little bit, glue those down with regular white glue, and we'll be back in a moment. So once the glue is dry, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a little spackling paste, and we're just going to spread some on the base just to make it look not so flat and a little bit more natural, just to give it a little bit more interesting surface area and texture. So once we've gone and we've piled a bunch of this stuff on the areas that don't include these XPS foam rocks, we're gonna take some coarse sand, stuff that I got from a model and train store, and I'm gonna sprinkle some on the spackle while it's still wet. Just stick that in like that. Again, adding just a little variety and texture to the terrain piece. With that sorted out, the next thing that we're going to do is add in the bits of rusted metal. Now you can use anything for this. You can use spare bits of sprue, you can use just offcuts of plastic hard or anything from your recycling bin, parts from other models, whatever you want. However, you're not really gonna go wrong. You can't really tell what these things are, what they're from. They don't look like pipes or I-beams or anything like that. The thing that I came across that I thought looked closest was at one time I had made this laser cut MDF terrain. And for whatever reason, and actually as it turns out for this reason, I had kept the bits of sprue. And so I've got all these kind of sci-fi looking uh, bits that I have started to cut up just with a pair of scissors or Zacto knife or whatever into these small chunks and now I am just going to place those strategically around these rubble piles to give it a nice shattered battlefield kind of look. So I'm going to just glue a couple of these on and we will go from there. Obviously, whatever you've got at hand will look just fine. This is just what I'm using.
So here we have our rubble piles with our metal scraps glued on. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some watered down white glue and we're going to spread it around on all the areas that are spackle and some of the uh, base that's still showing. So the spackle and the hardboard. And we're just going to move that around, coat all that. And when we've got it all coated, we're going to going to take some regular old sand and we're going to sprinkle it on top as a final level of ground cover for our terrain pieces. Here are my scrap metal piles all modeled up and ready, ready to be painted. So I'm of course going to give them an undercoat, a black undercoat with just regular old spray paint. But before I do that, I do have these exposed areas of XPS foam and I want to be careful with that because spray paint can melt styrofoam so just real quickly i'm going to quickly brush on just regular black paint and that does a pretty good job of protecting it step one base coat of charcoal gray next we add a bunch of water to some black paint and we hit it with the black wash next we're going to do a pretty heavy dry brush of charcoal mixed with rain gray Next, we're going to add more rain gray to that mix and go in with a slightly lighter dry brush. Next is just pure rain gray. Then a very light dry brush of rain gray mixed with drizzle gray. And then finally, a very light dusting of just drizzle gray on the very top edges. So with the rocks mostly sorted out, it's time to go back to these chunks of metal. And the first thing that we're going to do is just go over them once more with regular old black. I want these metal pieces to look kind of dark, so I'm going to go directly into a pretty heavy dry brush of silver mixed with a lot of black. So it's going to just be a very dark dry brush to get the color in. Then of course we go in with another dry brush, a little lighter, a little more silver, a little less black. And then one final dry brush with more silver, just concentrating on the edges. Now I've taken a little burnt umber and thinned it down with a fair amount of water. I'm just gonna apply a light wash in selective areas where dirt and rust would tend to accumulate. So edges, sides of rocks, little spots around, around the base, and maybe just a thin coat in some spots of the metal. So now I'm going to take some Adobe Red and I'm going to just lightly stipple some on different areas to start adding in a bit of a rust effect. I'm only gonna put this on the metal bits and I'm gonna use it kind of sparingly because I do want to keep these being fairly dark. Just wanna give the impression of a little rust, not overdo it like I usually do. Finally, we're gonna take a little of this pumpkin color, a little bright orange, and we're just gonna stipple on few spots of that very sparingly just in the middle of some of these reddish patches that we have created and you do too much like I did just there you can always go in wet your brush take it down a little bit and just move through and this is the last thing we have to do for my next project, I am going to make some barbed wire entanglements or barricades, you know, the, the rolls of barbed wire you see as the doctor and companions go picking their way through Scarrow in Genesis of the Daleks. So to do that, first off, I took some of those hardboard bases that I made. They're about six inches long by two inches wide. And I made the ground cover exactly like I did before. I put on some foam uh, chunks for larger rocks. I made some uh, uneven areas with spackle and then covered it with glue and put on two different kinds of rocks or sand. So 
With strips this long, there was a tendency for it to warp, it kind of bowed up a little bit. I just bent it back the other way and that seemed to work just fine. So now it's time to start on the actual barbed wire roll. And originally I wanted to use this chicken hutch wire, this um, wire fencing that's in a square grid pattern. But I guess I must have used that for another project, probably on Halloween. But what I did find was this chicken coop fencing, this chicken wire here. So the, the hexagon stuff. And I think it'll turn out different. It'll maybe be a little bit more work to deal with, but I think it may even look a little bit better. So I'm gonna use that. Either way, whichever one you do, um, for the rabbit hutch fencing, I was just going to go along one line, snip off the ends of the cross pieces and end up with this little spiky strip of wire and coil that around. And I thought that would have been easier. But instead we're gonna do this. Either way, this stuff is all pretty cheap, so it's not too much of an investment getting either one of these. But of course, free is better, so I'm gonna use the stuff that I have lying around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to clip off a run of this wire. And with chicken wire, it kind of switches back and forth. So this wire here will go this way, down, up, down, up. And so I'm going to clip little bits off of either side. And I'm just gonna try and get a long run of wire with little spiky bits on either side. And so I think you can probably tell where I am heading with this. All right? So I'll check back after I've gotten a chunk of that done. So now we have this very long wire with coiled bits around it. And you can see it's definitely already looking a bit like barbed wire. But the next step is gonna be, we're gonna take just something in a, a basic cylinder shape. For me, I've chosen this very large paintbrush. And I am going to take this wire and I'm just going to wrap it around. I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna wrap it kind of tight so that these flatter, oops, so that these flatter ends with the, uh, with the wire wrapped around it so that those manage to bend into a circle shape as well. And my wire is clattering against my tripod, making a lot of noise, sorry about that. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna go around the whole thing. Oops, that one popped off. I'll fix that in a minute. Like that. So after I've coiled all that wire, I went and clipped off a section about four inches long. And as you can see, it, it looks pretty good as it is. We could leave it here and be in good shape, but I'm gonna take it one step further. So if you look real close, see these sections that are coiled together? You have it wound on one end and wound on the other end, and then there's a little straight section in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this and on each of the little coiled sections at either end, I'm gonna just take a little bit of super glue and I'm gonna put a little drop in there so that it stays in place. and doesn't move when we go to do the next thing. So I'll check back with you after that has been glued and it is dried. Be aware that while you are doing all this, these little bits of metal are actively trying to stab you. So, you know, use gloves if you have to, just be aware. Anyway, we're going on to the next stage of this. And so what you've got here is one long coil of wire with short bits of wire wrapped around it at various ends. So what we're gonna do, and remember how I said there's a little straight section in the middle? I'm very carefully gonna find out which one is the short section and I'm gonna snip through it like so. There we go. And so you'll end up with extra spiky ends like that. And hopefully if your super glue is doing its job, it'll still stay there. And you will get extra spiky barbed wire. And now I'm just gonna go all the way down the length, finding the little short wires snipping through them, and if necessary, bending the spiky bits that I've created into a new position. So now we have our barbed wire, now with even more barbs, and so we have to make the little stands that go on either end. Now it's hard to get a good look at these in the show, 
but it looks like in the beginning there were these little tripods set up on either end. So I'm gonna make those out of some toothpicks. Originally I tried barbecue skewers, but they looked too thick. So I'm gonna cut down some toothpicks to about an inch. Get two of those. I'm cutting off the little decorative ends of these particular toothpicks because they're all fancy. All right. I'm gonna start with a little cross piece like this. So take a little dab of super glue. See if I can do this without gluing my fingers together. Stick that on like that. All right, let that set for a moment. When that is cured to an acceptable amount, we're going to take it and we're gonna set it up on one end like this. More super glue, goes in like that, just makes it a lot faster using the super glue. And let that set. And then we're gonna take one more of these. Probably gonna have to end up making it a little bit longer. Oop, that one's a little bit um, broken, so it's not perfectly round. So cut that off like that and about like that set it in there and just glue that down with some shots of super glue like so and like so and then we're going to do that exact same thing to the other side and we're going to bend this so that it fits either end <clears throat> and then we're going to glue that in and so there you have it scaro style barbed wire entanglement ready to be painted exactly the same way as the scrap piles so here we have all the finished terrain pieces painted up i hit it with a bit of spray matte varnish you can use whatever kind you like mixed in with some of the other terrain pieces and models and you can see it there. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. The MDF is maybe a little thicker than I would like, but I'm actually really happy with how the barbed wire went. So that's about it. If you have any questions, observations, concerns, go ahead and leave those in the comment section below, and I will see you on the next one.